So this is happening all over the world. They're starting to abandon the dollar, and the U.S. economy will never be the same if they do. Something Wicked This Way Comes. That was the title of a Ray Bradbury novel from the 80s that was made into a movie starring Jason Robards and Jonathan Price, a couple of my favorite actors. But it applies to the global economy today. And I want to show you a couple of the reasons why. We're going to cover a lot of ground in this very short video. And I'm going to get to something that I promised you last week. Uh, but first, uh, the GDP of Australia grabs the record for the longest time without a recession. It grew consistently for 26 years without a recession. And this article was written a year and a half ago, June of 2017. So it's actually 27 and a half years without a recession. They sort of escaped the global financial crisis of 2008. Now, the next article I'm going to show you is about the real estate prices in Australia. Australian capital city home prices are falling at a rate not seen since the global uh, financial crisis. Now, some of their housing market did fall during that crisis, but their GDP still did not contract. But going down to this chart here, now this chart, a little hard to read, so I'm going to explain it. This is actually two charts side by side, or you could call it the same chart split in half. You can see that it starts in 2016 and it goes up until today. And then this half starts in 2016 and goes up until today. So basically, it's the same chart. They've just put a couple of cities on one side and other cities on the other side. So here you have uh, Eastern Australia. You've got uh, Melbourne is the black line here. Sydney is the blue line. The five capital cities, Brisbane. And then over here, you've got Adelaide and Perth. And uh, what you're seeing here is they were experiencing 20% growth in real estate prices in Melbourne and uh, in Sydney uh, year over year. This is annualized data. So in one year, prices went up 20% <laughs> in these cities. Uh, and Brisbane chugged along with, with a growth of like 2% or whatever. Uh, Adelaide did the same thing. Perth didn't do quite as well. But now what we're seeing is in 2018, this big contraction, and this is 10% fall in prices, and you've got like a 12% fall over in Perth. So the Australian real estate bubble, which is one of the biggest real estate bubbles in the world when you measure it as a percentage of disposable income, uh, or a percentage of you know the, the mortgage rent ratio, all the ways that you can measure uh, the, the um, mortgage average income ratio, all the ways that you can measure whether real estate is overvalued or undervalued. Australia has one of the biggest real estate bubbles in the world. And remember, all economies are connected. Now, another thing about Australia, when I spoke there back in, I think it was 2013, um, I was showing charts of where their income comes from. And an enormous amount of the Australian income comes from exporting raw materials to China. And China is also slowing down. So they're in for, you know, not only are real estate uh, prices contracting, but as soon as China has a problem, Australia has a major, major problem. Now I want to move on to something more uh, international than this. Uh, this is a Zero Hedge article. Uh, Putin, we aren't aiming to ditch the dollar. The dollar is ditching us. Now, since 2009, I started giving presentations on the death of the global dollar standard. When I was writing my book, uh, Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver, I wanted to study all of the different uh, monetary systems, and I wanted to. St I, I built a spreadsheet of every banking crisis, uh, every recession, every every crisis that I could find uh, in the U.S. And one thing really stuck out at me: there was a cycle to the change in the world monetary system. 
We had the classical gold standard before World War I. We had the uh, gold exchange standard, the intra-war gold standard between the wars. Then we had the Bretton Woods system from 44 to 71. And then uh, that, when that one fell apart, even though there was an emergency meeting of uh, the, all of the finance ministers and economists, just like we had in 1922 and 1944, in 1971, there was a something called the Washington uh, Agreement or the Washington Accord, and uh, they tried to come up with a new world monetary system. It fell apart, and the default was the global dollar standard. It was a complete accident and it's the worst designed system of them all and it's falling apart at a faster and faster rate it was stable from 71 until when saddam hussein started selling oil for euros and that's when it started falling apart but putin says we aren't aiming to ditch the dollar the dollar is ditching us and we're not uh, setting a target of moving away from the dollar. The dollar is moving away from us, and those who take uh, respective uh, sanctions, the decisions, uh, are shooting themselves. So it's <clears throat> the U.S. leaders that are doing this, and they've been weaponizing the dollar since the year 2000. Every president that we've had since the year 2000, doesn't matter whether they're Republican or Democrat, They've been shooting themselves in the foot because they're weaponizing the dollar and the world is turning away from the dollar. And we get this enormous privilege of having the world's reserve currency. And it should be treated as a privilege and treasured because the longer it goes on, the higher our sta standards of living in America are. But we're shooting, it says that we're shooting ourselves not just in the foot, but slightly higher. <laughs> Um, as such, instability in calculations in dollars creates a desire of many global economies to find an alternative reserve currencies and create settlement systems independent of the dollar. So they're skipping things like the uh, SWIFT system, which is an international settlement system between banks that uses the U.S. dollar. We're not the only ones doing it, believe me. So this is happening all over the world. They're starting to abandon the dollar, and the U.S. economy will never be the same if they do. So this is something really big. This is a shift in the global monetary system that's going to coincide with a global recession caused by all of the reckless uh, reactions to the global financial crisis of 2008. And then, as I promised from, the la from last week's video, I was going to show you one more thing regarding tax revenues. Here we have a chart on the Federal Reserve's website, and I'm doing this one live on the Federal Reserve's website so that I can sweep over it and show you a couple of different things. But what we've got here is the government's current expenditures, federal government, so how much they spend, compared to the government's current tax receipts. Now, they do get uh, some tariffs and duties that they don't consider taxes. So they're a little bit higher than current. Th this red line of in total income is a little bit higher than this red line of what they get from taxes between corporations and individuals and all of the other taxes that the government gets. But the spread between this is what is dangerous this gap between the red and the blue. And what you see is that whenever there is a, re a big recession, as of this century, this started only in this century. There wasn't a correlation uh, between all of this before this century. But here we have uh, an enormous spread between the red dot and the blue dot. The gap there is huge. And what you see each time there's a recession, notice that uh, the expenditures are growing at a certain rate, and then we have a recession, and the angle of this line tilts, and the expenditures get greater. Now, tax receipts also grew uh, as we had the real estate bubble. But then with the global financial crisis of 2008, tax revenues fall, and the expenditures expanded at a much more rapid pace. And look at the size of that gap. And then the gap starts to close up as tax revenues rise.
but now the gap is starting to expand again. This is another danger signal. And the big recession has not begun yet. When the recession happens, there's going to be a, a drop in tax revenues that's even greater than what we saw in the global financial crisis of 2008. And their response with all the government programs to try and stimulate things is going to be greater than what we saw in the global financial crisis of 2008. So we are in for a wild ride. And right now, this is all occurring while gold and silver prices are incredibly depressed. This is what early warning system was about. And this is what my videos on the everything bubble were, was about. It's about getting prepared for the something wicked that is this way coming. Thanks you, thank you very much for listening. I'm Mike Maloney. Please, if you got anything from this, please like it, share it, give it, give it that thumbs up, click the bell up in the corner for a reminder uh, when we come out with our next video, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.